Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. So, when you last joined us, we'd just seen the girl who died. And now we've seen up to and including the Zygon Inversion, episode mm-hmm. 8. So, let's tackle The Woman Who Lived, episode 6. Mm. Now, in my opinion, The Girl Who Died was good, mm. as we discussed. But I think The Woman Who Lived absolutely blew it out of the water. Okay. Despite that. Yeah. Because what you have in this one is uh, some of the best dialogue between two characters ever. Mm-hmm. And Ashilda, or Lady Me, as she calls herself in this one, instantly establishes herself as such an important and brilliant part of the Doctor Who canon. Um, every conversation between Maisie Williams and Peter Capaldi is insanely good drama. It's, it's evidently a smaller budget episode than usual, but... Very much in, in a good way, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a different situation from the immortal Captain Jack who lives mm-hmm. out his days on Earth, goes through history. Um, and it's a very different situation from other immortals. This felt utterly unique because she's got no uh, little thing on her wrist that take, lets her travel around time. She's just living out her days mm-hmm. and having all sorts of identity crises. And it's fascinating. I especially love how she rips out pages of her own journal that right. she wants to forget. That's actually that's really adult drama there. And the fact that she yeah. had children, she had to forget that as well. It's just like, yeah, really brilliant. I loved it. I thought Rufus Hound provided good comic relief. And I'd kind of like to see a little Maisie Williams Rufus Hound spin-off, actually. I agree with everything you said. I mean, do you think this serves as absolute definitive proof that we need more ge- gender diversity in the writing team? Possibly. Um, I think it shows that Peter Capaldi is capable of uh, nuanced performance and uh, slightly deeper character studies. He's, he's, yes. I think possibly a little more than Matt Smith, and actually I'm going to say it, more than David Tennant, who I think was fairly prone to bouts of overacting. Yes. Peter Capaldi... Runs a nice gambit of subtlety and uh, and eccentricity. I agree. I I find Matt Smith mm-hmm. to be maybe the the more subtle performer personally. Well, I, 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 th- I think just, I think his performance just is, comes through. I think his performance is extremely extroverted. Like all of that, I, I do agree that he's good at expressing those different facets of personality. But I'd say that that that's um, very much projected. That's very much a sort of kinetic performance, whereas I think Peter Capaldi has several layers going on in different ways. Okay. And I'm not trying to put down Matt Smith by comparing their performances. Matt Smith in an episode like this would have been possibly quite painful. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so, in that he's uh, more cartoonish. I think that Peter Capaldi, I think, I think it's just so good that they've gone and because I think the, the moment in The Girl Who Died where he hugs Clara he says mm-hmm. I'm not a hugger and they're like ah oh, whatever come here mm-hmm. totally symbolic of the brilliant changes they've made to to his character to his character I think they clearly just had a look at well I don't know maybe it was even Peter Capaldi himself who said this right. they've clearly had a look at what they did in series A and they was like okay okay I may have gone too far in a few places That's, and um yeah as George Lucas As George said. Lucas once said it. <laughs> and then maybe we can put it down, his, his extreme grumpiness, his, his die-all-you-like-not-my-problem sort of attitude. How, how much do you view this um, evidently altered performance, evidently altered way of writing the Peter Capaldi Doctor as, as an evolution as compared to a... A, a, a retry, like, like I like say, a restart, a retry, right. a restart, because from the moment, because in last Christmas he's still saying, oh, "I deleted you all, mm-hmm. I forgot you all, I didn't even know you existed." Yeah, and then Magician's Apprentice, he's lovely to everybody. <laughs> yes, it's it's a huge change. I think it really is an yeah. emergency, guys. This is not a good role model for children. Yeah. So let's just say he had a big, long post regeneration crisis. Sure. And then now well, he's the Doctor again. the entire arc of the Doctor, uh, last series, whether or not you think they achieved it, was to get to the point where he 
basically absolves himself of morality by saying he's not he's not good or evil, he's just a person who intervenes and tries to do good and he tries to do his best. Mm-hmm. And once he realised that, that's slightly more of what this doctor is doing, but it, the the change is so drastic. He is practically a different character. Yeah, no, it, it's, it didn't come naturally. As well, it, yeah. it didn't come slowly, did it? it because if you, if you were to watch Last Christmas and then watch... Um, the Magician's Apprentice, one after another, they're entirely different. Yeah, you'd want you'd want yeah. the Twelfth Doctor to be the Doctor, mm-hmm. not Malcolm Tucker as the Doctor. You know, it it almost feels like with Series Eight that they would they expected people to go, oh yeah, I like this idea of a grumpy dark Doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want him to be like Malcolm Tucker in the TARDIS. That was actually quite a popular idea. Like people yeah. were actually saying to each other, "Wouldn't that be great?" Malcolm Tucker in the TARDIS getting angry at everybody and um, no nonsense sure. doctor. And they did that, and we found it didn't work. Well, it yeah. kind of worked in places, but it wasn't. It's just not a character I was willing to put up with much more, sure. much longer. And I think that's really great that they've done that. That mm-hmm. was the first thing that made this series such a superior entity. For well, me. yeah, exactly. I, I think. In this series, there's been quite a few moments that are quintessentially classic Doctor moments. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the a big lot of speeches and all that. Yeah, not just big speeches. I mean, like just little turns of phrase or uh, ways of delivering a line which are unique to him, but feel as though they are continuations. There's weirdly moments that stick in my head from David Tennant, uh, like. There's a, a moment in 42 where there's this really heated discussion between the captain and like uh, a first mate who, who's a bit of an asshole and the captain sort of makes a point at him and then he shuts up and then David Tennant just goes, that showed him! And he like entirely misreads the, the, the sort of the unspoken atmosphere of the room. Uh, and I, 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 I'm not saying that that's what Capaldi does, but, but there, there are moments, like movements gestures. And, Small things yeah. that show he's not quite in tune with everybody. Not quite in tune with everybody. But he's different, he he's is. alien. Uh, yeah, he doesn't entirely understand what's going on. Always. David Tennant understood it. David Tennant's doctor understood it more so than others, maybe. He was yeah, but, human. Yeah, but he was, he was slightly... Uh, he was slightly off at times, and mm-hmm. I think he was best when they showed that. Oh, yes, certainly. Yeah. What did you think of Rufus, Rufus Hound in this one? Any much of an opinion? He kind of played himself. Yeah, no, I, I didn't really have an opinion. Because there, there's quite clearly two parts of the story. There's the intense character drama, the, the implications of, of immortality, and then there's the uh, cat people want to invade, which is the half that Rufus oh, yeah. Hound was um, more involved in. And I I know that for, for some people, um, the cat thing ruins the, the immortality discussions, the, the deep uh, discussions. yeah. Didn't for me. No, neither me neither. Because I'm I'm much like much like Eleven and his pile of good things and pile of bad things. I don't think that they uh, knock each other out. Yeah, you, you, they 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 just they're just two elements yeah. that exist. And, and in my opinion, the lion stuff wasn't a bad thing. It was just it it was actually just like the Viking nonsense in the episode before. And I, yeah, exactly. And I enjoyed that a lot. But yeah. but it's I think people are, are going to be more impressed with your writing if you go from light-hearted to dark than if you go from dark to light-hearted. Yes. But then, the final scene of the two of them sitting in the pub. Brilliant. Really beautiful. Brilliant. And, yeah, no, she's, an, she's a very intense actor. Yes, absolutely. And that, that was the scene when they, when they were sort of talking, like, there's clearly a bond between them after all this mm-hmm. that is uh, something quite special, something... Uh, on the levels of, you know, the reason you'd look forward to Captain Jack turning up mm-hmm. dead is because yeah. of the rapport you have with the Doctor. Yeah. And uh, you were always keen to know, how would he be with this Doctor or this Doctor? And yeah. River again, you know. River with the Twelfth Doctor, we're all looking forward to that, I mm-hmm. think. Um, and then a Shielder now, I think, will be part of that forum discussion of, mm-hmm. oh, is this going to be a Shielder? Is she going to come back? Are we going to see a Shielder again? Yeah. I think she's officially, I hope, at least me, got yeah. people excited. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, definitely. And I'm glad that they didn't do anything with, oh, this is, uh, oh, it's actually Susan Foreman, or it's, it's someone. Oh, I it's see. Someone. Well, that would have been It's an original awful. character, and that's That's wonderful. more interesting. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And if you didn't have the line stuff, think about it, it would just be... And there, I wouldn't have a problem with this. Well, I it sh- would just be them talking for the well, whole episode. Well, you know, I, I think seeing as the line stuff vitally plays into her character development, mm, the episode yeah. wouldn't have worked without it. Yeah, yeah. It could have been less out there another... and, and less crazy. But yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Do you imagine that Lion Man is a distant relative of the New Earth cat people like Brannigan? I, I think that wormhole transcended time as well as space. And he was Brannigan's father. <laughs> I'd love to see as they open the portal that you can see Brannigan. Hello! Well, yeah, Come to he's, us, Maisie he's in, Williams! He's in his little ship. And he's like... <laughs> Meow! He's a cat in the air, he's a cat airplane. But he's he comes so to fucking world. stupid that he sets off like the guns in the ship. <laughs> and everyone starts kills dying. kills sound. Yeah. And then they can't have that arc at the end. Exactly. Man. Yeah. No, I, I, and I, I, I like that they leave that open. Oh, your, your friend over there, Sam Swift, mm-hmm. he might be immortal now. I don't know. Or he might not be, because who knows? Because who knows? Because we're making this up. Maybe. Like, I don't know. Cause that, that would, I should have justified that in the first place. That was the reason it got me quite excited. But, ooh. Mm-hmm. Think of all the missed opportunities for spin-offs. Like, we could have yeah. had a... We could have had Madame Vastra Jenny Strax sure. spin-off. We sure. could have had... Uh, this we could have there, there, there were other there, we could have Missy who we could have had Missy uh, who yeah. all sorts of other things and what we got was let's go into Cole Hill High School again from mm-hmm. the caretaker it's like hmm many other options sure. you had there yeah well you know I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me too much it's Cole just Hill. like yeah I mean I'm just uh, intrigued by that decision it's yes because of course they've already done that really because yeah. Sarah Jane was about kids at high school. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's interesting to know because obviously throughout Doctor Who, the Doctor always meets these characters that are mirror images of himself. You know, Matt Smith met the Gunman, the Gunmaker, uh, and David Tennant's master, and uh, all sorts of people. But um, recurrently, Peter Capaldi's equal and opposites have been women. Oh, yeah. uh, you see the 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 way that he interacts with Maisie Williams is so strange. It is because strange. he is he is he's turning into an old man. I wouldn't say he's an old man yet, but he's certainly the end of his middle age. And she's a very young woman. I think she's eighteen now. Yeah, and they 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 write her as this extremely mature woman. She does it with mm-hmm. utter conviction. It's Perfect casting. Well, yeah, I mean, and the, the, Bounce off she's each other absolutely a, a, an equal match for him. There's also Missy to a lesser extent because they don't really play around with the parallels there. It's just yeah. always when the master turns up, you know, she's meant to be the, the doctor's equivalent, and and that's exactly what they're doing with Clara, is that she is turning into yeah. the doctor, and that her plot arc is taking her to the point where she's too similar to the doctor, which is the reason why he wouldn't take. Me uh, with him on the TARDIS, and so you know. What well, a shame for you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the well, lady me, Tom. Lady me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a lady. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh dear. Well, okay. Yeah. So that that was great, wasn't it? The, yeah. The, the, the desperation on Lady Me's face. Yeah. Which is says, "Take me with you." You know, I've lost everything. I need more than this, and it's. It's so tragic and, and heavy and It brilliant. is tragic, yeah. And I like that side of it because Clara's just so used to travelling in time. She she gets it yeah. all at her fingertips and yeah. then here's someone who's who who needs it. You know, the doctor has it because that's the only thing that keeps him sane. The doc uh, Clara's a bit of a, a bit of a brat. I mean she's a nice oh, person certainly. but she's um she's quite spoiled. Yes, I think by um, especially the way that Matt Smith treated her, like he he was just bending over backwards for her and doing everything that she wanted, and yeah. And then when the Peter Capaldi one came I'm along, I'm not your friend anymore. He's, he's he's far more temperamental. Yeah. And she's like, well, if if I can't have it my way, then I'm leaving. Mm. You know, um, I think I think she is an interesting character, and I think a lot of people do sort of under undervalue the. The, the the subtle ways that Jenna plays her, like there's been some people saying that that Danny Pink's been thrown aside too quickly, but honestly, I I think there are lots of moments where you see that she's just in mourning. Whoa, she is yeah. very sad. She's a very sad person. She's running away from her grief. Woman who lived absolutely terrific, in my opinion. Yeah. 
uh, more drama like this. Nice character drama. Very nice indeed. And congrats to all involved. And Catherine Trenegger. Yeah. I hope she's back in all subsequent series. Yeah. Writer of all the best episodes of Torchwood as well. Really? Definitely. Right. The ones that stood out were always done by her. Well, it came across as quite, you know, it had that sort of slightly adult edge at times. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that's... It's not required, but it's certainly yeah. appreciated. Well, she always wrote the adult Torchwoods. The rest of them were all like, if a 15-year-old boy was writing, and he's like, let's talk about sex. Yeah. She wrote about real adult, difficult, painful drama. There, there, There's like, a, you, you know. Like <laughs> you see, that. Well, it's like an episode where an alien wants to sex everybody. And yeah, exactly. Got this. Well, she wrote an episode about Tosh, where... Tosh fell in love with a, a, a World War Two soldier who comes forward from the future, but then she has to go back and uh, take him back into the past or something, and the experience leaves him shell-shocked, so she knows that he's going to get shot, but she needs to send him back. It's something like that. It, that sounds intense. Yeah. And there's another one where there's like this memory monster that's inserting itself into the memories, and the way it, um, it takes out Yanto is so horrific... Like, it makes him believe that he raped a woman and murdered her. And because Yanto is such oh a... Oh, my God. Because he is such a decent person, he can't handle the memory of doing that. Like, I mean, that, like, th those that themes... That is nasty. It's so nasty. But it's a lot more interesting, drama-wise, than... There's a thugs monster. Oh, no, it's gonna have thugs with me. I hope that I gotta have thugs with a thugs monster. Oh, uh, this, that's a line from Captain Jack, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I'm lying. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. And then we maybe get to see John Barrowman naked. Oh, well, yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Naked. Maybe he'll have sex with Yanto. Oh, he did that a lot, yeah. Does Captain Jack do anything in Captain Schneider's episode? Oh, she wrote an episode called Captain Jack Harkness. Captain Jack meets the man whose name he stole. So you know how in, 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 in An Empty Child, The Empty Child, he's stolen the identity of an American soldier. Oh, he has yeah. to meet the man whose identity he stole. And the reason he was able to steal it is because he dies and he falls in love with him. That sounds amazing. Mm, that's a good drama, yeah. Oh. You've got to sit through a lot of schlock and as well. And it took them ten years to hire ten this years person. To, well, I understand. She, I, I understand she was busy a lot of the time. I am like Neil Gaiman says, and I know that Neil Gaiman may not be the most reliable source to hang this entire statement on. But no, he did imply that that Stephen Moffat's been asking female writers to write for the show every year since he joined, but they've just always been in other contracts and they've been busy. Okay, so that's, that's the woman who lived. So yeah. we'll stop there for now, and we'll come back with the Zygon Invasion Plus Inversion. Both of them. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Bird Nomahawk YouTube channel.